Good afternoon all, I'm back again and this is Nigel and he's going to be giving a little chat about apple pollination. He's, I'll just quickly show you over here. He's got all these apple trees and I'm going to pass you, I'm going to let him give a little chat about it. That'll be the easiest thing. Okay, over to you Nigel. Okay, uh, well you're probably not aware but um, when you plant the pips from an apple you don't actually get the same apple from the, uh, the new trees that you started with. And the way you actually raise new varieties is to plant pips from apples that you've created by pollinating yourself. Uh, you choose your two apple parents, you cross them in a way that I'll show you, and then the fruit that develop, you take the pips, you sow them, and those are your potential new varieties. Right. Mm. Now I've already seen the little demo, so this is really interesting. Okay, so I move. Right, the first thing you have to do is to collect the pollen from one of your parents. Okay. Um, it's important to select interesting parents that are going to give you uh, an apple that's worth having. There are thousands of good apples already, so there's no point in creating something that is pretty much like something that already exists. Um, so what I've got here, uh, this little tree has very, very late apples, uh, which you can take off the tree in mid-January. And this one here um, produces apples, you can see it's got very unusual blossom. This one produces apples which are red inside. Okay. So you, we've got two really unusual parents here, one that's very, very late, and one that has uh, quite a good, uh, well, spectacular appearance. So if we cross these, we could get probably quite an interesting variety. Great. So the first thing we need to do is to collect some pollen. And the way that this is done, I'll just get my kit. The way that you collect pollen from one of your parents is uh, to, well first of all you've got to find the pollen sacs on the flowers, uh, they're here, I don't know how close you can get yeah, on there. Yeah, I can there. get right in. Right, there we have the pollen sacs, so what we can do is get an ordinary comb and put a tray underneath like this and you just comb them off, okay? Yeah. So you do that with perhaps 50 flowers or so. Okay and then you leave this in an open tray for several days inside and those sacks will split giving out a yellow powder which is of course the pollen. You then collect the pollen together and on a nice warm day, rather like today, you have your tube of pollen Okay. And what we've got to do now is to apply that to the flower that we want to pollinate. Yeah. Now to pollinate one of these flowers, what I would need to do is... I've got to choose a flower that's not been pollinated already. So I've got to choose one that's still closed. We usually choose a flower that's at what we call the balloon stage, where it's just about to open. And you can see that there's one, there's another one, there's another one. Okay. And what we have to do is to take the pollen inside that flower, we've got to take that away, so it can't self-pollinate after I've hand-pollinated it. So I'll get my little tool. Right, there's my tool, look, a pair oh, of right. modified scissors. Right. And I put this on the the flower and uh, failed. Let's try another one. I'm going to try and pull. There we go. Now you can see that I've, if I take the petals off another flower so you can compare it, all right, you see there? Yeah. I've taken away all of the pollen sacs on the lower flower and the petals, and I've also taken away part of the flower structure known as the calyx. Okay. And now what I need to do is to get a glass rod, dip it into my pollen and apply it to the four anthers there on the flower. Alright.
Right, I've got some pollen that I collected last week. So what we do, there's my pollen. So I dip the glass rod into the pollen and then I apply it to the anthers like this. And you can probably see, if you get up close, that the pollen is sticking. So that shows that we've got quite a good chance of success. And that's it. Okay. And you, have, you have to do that to a lot of flowers. Um, you probably have to pollinate ten for one to be successful and to result in the fruit. Um, the apples that result from the hand pollination actually look different from the ones that are pollinated by bees. Here we have an apple that's pollinated by bees and here we have an apple that's pollinated by hand and you can see part of the structure of the apple is missing. The little sepals round the end are absent and there's a okay. sort of hole going in. Yeah, yeah. So that's how we recognise the hand pollinated apples. Right. So, and so what happens after you've done the pollination? Is it uh, that you then collect the pips from the apple that's formed on there? That's right, we yeah. collect, collect the pips from the apple. Uh, you have to save them until about February or March. Yeah. Um, it's best to keep them in the fridge. And then when it gets to February or March, you can put them in uh, a damp growing medium in a sealed container in the fridge and leave them there in the cold and they will slowly germinate over a period of about three months. Right, okay. And this is what happens... This is These trees here are about five years old, Would that, is that right? Uh, th well, th there's a sort of growing cycle of about five years. For the first two years you let the pips grow in, yeah. in pots. Yeah. And they'll probably get to about this high. Let me just go high. back there, yeah. Yeah. Okay, about that, that high. Um, when they're that size, one option is to l put them in the ground and see how long it takes them to fruit. But it can take up to a decade, which is far too long. So usually then you graft them, you take a piece of those seedlings, you graft them onto a rootstock, and you get trees like this. Now here you can see a tree which was grafted about two years ago, so this is in year four. You can see the graft down here. Okay. Um, it's grafted onto MM106 rootstock and with a bit of luck this might form a small amount of fruit next year and it's fairly certain that it will form uh, fruit uh, in bigger quantities the year after that and that's the stage at which you can evaluate it. Oh right, okay. Oh, that's interesting. Thanks a lot. Okay, thank you.